I cheered for the Dolphins. So literally, I'm, you were a cheerleader yeah, for the Miami. I was, oh yeah, yeah. You're I, was, Miami, I yeah. cheered. I cheered for the Dolphins 2004, 2005 season. Twenty years later, I'm mm. talking about it, and it's like still relevant to this day. Yeah. The amount of money we were paid, and I, I, I can talk about that all day. I don't care. Twenty five dollars a game. That no. is it. Twenty five. Yeah, because sometimes people are like, they didn't get paid much. Yeah, nothing. Twenty five dollars, and you can't say, oh, well, that was back in two thousand and two, like does, two it, or it four or five. 90s. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Twenty five dollars, and you know how long a football game is, right? Yeah, we would get there like two hours before the game. That, so that's like five hours. It was so ridiculous. Five dollars an hour. Twenty five dollars. There was some great things that came out of it. It was a growing experience. But would I do it again? What it do, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your day by day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with the I, not a Y, do not X Y. And today we are joined by influencer and great vibe. I should say myself. The one and only Miss Alexis. Hi. What's up, Alexis? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Thank you for pulling up. You look very lovely, by the way. I Thank like your you. outfit. Thank you. Um, and then you be doing that on your IG. Like, yes. you be, so, like, are you, are you like an ambassador or a brand partner with, like, or do you just be? So the outfit I have on right now is not, but mm -hmm. um, I do partner with a lot of brands. Mm -hmm. And it's really exciting when I get an email saying, hey, we'd love to partner with you because um, I love free stuff. But I also like getting paid to wear free yeah. stuff. Ah, so yeah, exactly. So I like that. I'm not a stylist or anything. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have like a certain style. Mm -hmm. um, a friend used to say, you dress in theme. Like mm. whatever the theme is for the event, that's mm. how you dress. Like, So what is this theme? Um, <laughs> this theme, I don't know. I, it's like, I don't know what it is. I just saw it and put it together mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, this looks cute, yeah. but it's giving like Beyonce, the I, boots. Okay. So I swear. I sw <laughs> the boots are giving yeah, like yeah. cow, like cowboy, cowgirl. What is it? Cowboy Carter or cowgirl Carter? I don't know. It's it went like crazy. Whatever like that. it is. Yeah. But I mean, I've worn cowboy boots before her and mm -hmm. before even the Renaissance concert, mm -hmm. but it's really big now. That's what it reminds me of. I'm like, those are like something that someone will wear at the Renaissance concert. Right, for right, sure. right, right. Speaking of your boots, which are nice, mm -hmm. did you see how Mary J. Blige, I forgot who she collabed with, but she had like $1,500 boots. No, I didn't. And they sold out within like minutes. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm gonna pull it up exactly. That's so funny. No, I didn't hear about that. I didn't even hear about that. That's crazy. Yeah, would you have bought them? Let me see them first, and then I'll <laughs> tell you if I would. No, I, you know what? I'm telling you right now, probably mm -hmm. not. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. I'm about to show yeah. you them. So she partnered with Giuseppe. Okay. Yeah, they're sold out now. But here are the boots. And you can scroll and look at the... Oh, these yeah. are pretty. Yeah. Rose gold. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty. 1,500 big ones. All right, so now Those that you are seen actually them, nice. Would you like, have bought them? $1,500 boots? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But they're beautiful. Yeah. I just don't see myself wearing them enough. Got you. To spend $1,500 on them? To spend $1,500. Mm -hmm. I travel so much that I'm like... I always look at everything like... I could have went here for those boots or I could. Mm. And some people say, well, you could do both. And I'm like, well, I can't do both. Maybe yeah. you could do both, but yeah. I can't do both. So I, if I'm going to choose, I'll choose the experience over mm -hmm. the material. Product. Thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. That mm -hmm. makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so Alexis, where are you from? I'm originally from New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. So I'm from New Jersey. And then I went to school in Miami. I went to university in Miami. Nice. Do um, you? I, yeah. I partied way too much it's miami and it's college like partied way two two. too much and then um my parents were like well you need to decide are you gonna stay in miami or are you gonna move here and i feel like Where's when here? you're jersey or charlotte um wait where were they they were still in new jersey but then they were planning to move here to charlotte so okay. they were like what do you want to do do mm -hmm. you want to like come to charlotte mm -hmm. and at the time i was 20 so i was mm -hmm. like I don't, I feel like kids now at 20 are like all about them, like independence and everything like that. 
But back then, I feel like most people go live with their parents. They're not going to just be like, okay, I'm going to go out at 20. I don't know. Well, Me, I mean, I think now more people, like the rate as far as living with their parents is, is up, higher now. Maybe I because of so. how expensive it is. Every, yeah, exactly. Every, shoot, yeah. Even, even like people like, I saw something like even like millennials. Right. A, a lot of millennials still live with their parents. Right. To save money. And right. it makes sense. Right. I mean, shit, if my grandmother lived out here somewhere, <laughs> and shot, I'll definitely be in her basement somewhere. I definitely don't shame people for... No, not at all. For multiple things, but main things are, I don't shame going to community college, especially when you don't know what you want to do. Yeah. Save your money. Mm -hmm. Go get your associate's degree, and then most of the time, all that transfers because it's your core classes. Right. Um, and then I don't shame you for living at home. Yeah. It's just so expensive. I just luckily bought a house at a good time mm -hmm. and in 2014. So it'll be 10 years, mm -hmm. September that I've lived in my house. Nice. And I just talk to so many people that don't have homes. Yeah. And I just feel so bad because I'm like, I can't imagine trying to buy a three to four hundred thousand dollar starter home yeah. when mine only costs like a hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh yeah, at least three to four hundred, especially yeah. in Charlotte. So many people, including myself and you as well, aren't that aren't from here. I mean, it's just and then with inflation, I mean, the prices are crazy. Just within three years, I mean, but I feel like here. a lot of people from up north. You're from up north, so am I. It's so expensive up there. So mm -hmm. then they come down here. Mm -hmm. And then they're like the main ones buying the houses because they mm -hmm. have the money because their house sold for eight, nine thousand or eight hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. um, and then they come down here and then they can buy a home for four or five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I feel like, unfortunately, the people from up north are driving those prices up, too, yeah, because are. they can easily get the house because they have the money right. to, to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. We are. What part of Charlotte do you live in? On the west side, like okay. near the Whitewater center okay mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, almost like about. mount holly like my yeah. sign says mount holly but it's not yeah, it's mm -hmm. charlotte yeah but i definitely feel like charlotte definitely can be on par with atlanta um i feel like it has the potential to be amazing i think it's great but i think it could be even more mm -hmm. um even the skyline is it's crazy that the skyline has like changed so much since I've moved here. It's top um, tier. I'm yeah. gonna cut you off, but I tell yeah. people like for for the Charlotte to be the downtown area for to be as small as it is, mm -hmm. Charlotte has one of the best skylines hands right. down. So, and clean. Yeah, the city is so yeah. clean. It that is. is one thing that it's like beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I will say like the homeless issue is like getting out of control and yeah. i'm pretty sure that's like almost any city major city but it's, but it's, it, it's large here. out here because yeah. i was in vegas mm -hmm. it's homeless people in vegas but right. charlotte has a vegas beat right. charlotte i'm from maryland so i've been back and forth between baltimore and dc um i think charlotte has both of those beat wow and when i first moved out here i lived in the university mm -hmm. and i always worked uptown so i would catch the blue line the light okay. rail and I mean, that was a hotel on wheels pretty right. much. Right, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. So, someone I know said that they had a gun pulled on them on, yeah. the, on the blue, blue line, line, like not too long ago, yeah, maybe like maybe two, three weeks ago. Wow. And it wasn't even like a fight or anything. They just were like, I think it was mental illness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's a lot of people that like talk to themselves right. and just yell out stuff. And he was yeah. saying, I, I forgot what he said, Said, but it was just very weird and nothing happened thank god but like i don't know that would be ptsd for me and i, yeah, I don't think tough. i'd ever want to get back on there that's tough because you remember that movie snow on the bluff that we thought was real but turned out to be fake was that fake that was fake snow on the bluff was wait yeah, fake. That was fake. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 that was fake yeah yeah well i was gullible they had me <laughs> when i first saw it i, I thought remember it was... seeing it a long time ago yeah, yeah. yeah. When, we, when we first saw it i thought it was real i'm like yo this is insane like <laughs> the same thing with paranormal activity like we oh, thought those were real i knew that wasn't real but i could not sleep for like a week after watching i think really? it was part two I, I could not sleep after watching that. It was scary. I'm not, I, I'm so scary. You don't I'm like such, so, I'm, I'm not. What movies or movies scared you the most? Okay, growing up, It, the original. The original one, yeah. So scary. Oh my God. Like It, um, like The Leprechaun. Really? The Leprechaun. But he was oh, like funny. Well, The Leprechaun was scary to me because I was little. And when I was 
sleep in my bed, mm -hmm. I feel like when I would turn over, he would be, be like right there, right there in my he face. Was short, so he was short. He was short. Like, so if yeah, I turn around, he's going to be right, right there. there. Yeah, yeah. But the leprechaun, it, um, what other scary movies? Well, paranormal activity. And I'm going to like, I was older and I was still mm -hmm. scared. Yeah. The ring. Yeah, the ring mm -mm. was, yeah, yeah. I could do Saw. I could do Saw movies. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, what's the the game one that just came out? Like Netflix, the game recently, the red jumpsuits. What's that one? Oh. That's oh. not really scary, You're but it is. You're talking about um, with, yeah, like the, yeah, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Asian people? Yeah, yeah. I forgot what it's called, but that scares you? A little bit. I never but watched like, it. Oh, it's so it's, it's good. Yeah. You need to you need to watch that. Have you ever seen the Insidiouses? No, I will not watch that or anything like with exorcisms. Yeah, those are scary because I feel like that might happen. Insidious. You know what actually scares me? Well, scary movie wise, Jeepers Creepers scared me. Oh, Jeepers Creepers. That was bad. Mm -mm. And Michael no Myers. Thanks. Even though I loved Halloween, I could I could deal with Michael Myers. Freddy, Freddy was Nightmare on Elm Street. Was was he was, was funny. Freddie yeah. was like a comedian. Okay, Freddie and Leprechaun, I get it. Yeah, but they were like, funny. That was scary at yeah. that age. Yeah, yeah, it was I got scary. you. Um, you know what actually scares me more than movies? Docs, like murder Docu docs. documentaries. Did you see Nightcrawler? No. About the guy in L.A. in like the '80s. No, but you know what? Mm -hmm. I love true crime. Yeah, I do, and I'm not scared of true crime. Mm. The only thing is like. I don't really like watching it at night by myself because the the way it sounds. They I'm like, add eh, the music. I'm like, no, <laughs> let me turn um, this off. Let me I, check my alarm. Well, on. I don't recommend that you just watch the trailer at least for night. Okay. Night. It's either Night Walker or Night Stalker. Mm -hmm. Um, about the guy in the '80s, but the music was very dark and the scenes was very dark, and he had a very scary looking Look. face. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I watched it. It was so bad. Desi had to sleep in my room for like a week. I'm not even because he would come in people's houses at night and he would just do terrible shit. Like so it was very bad. Did they not have alarms bad. on? This was in the eighties. Oh people yeah. People would leave their doors yeah, open, all types yeah. of shit in L.A. You know. Yeah. It was it was really like he was fucked up. And then John Wayne Gacy. Mm -hmm. That did you ever like see? I am mad that I just smiled when you said his name. I was like, well, you just said you but like I murder. Love, you like true time. Yeah, true, true, crimes, true crime. I do. Docs. But like his story is so crazy. That was so fucked up. It's so crazy. Yeah, like what, like thirty five kids, thirty five boys buried in his basement so in his crazy. undercrawl space. Yeah, because he dressed up as the uh, clown. Yeah, and he was like a he was in politics. Like yes. he was a liked guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Charismatic Wait, liked guy. He's the yeah he's the clown. Clown. Yeah, that was John Wayne Gacy. BTK was in the church. That's what it was. I, I was like, yeah, is. BT BTK like the. I never seen that. Oh my god, BTK. Okay. Should I should I watch yes. that? Is it on Netflix? It, it just search BTK. BTK. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. He. Ooh. Yeah. He's up there with John Wayne. Like, if you know him, you should mm -hmm. know BTK. All right, I'm gonna mm -hmm. check that one out. So, with you being from Jersey, mm -hmm. you're a Giants fan. Yes, huge I'm, Giants fan. <laughs> I'm an Eagles fan. Everyone knows this. Um. So I'm a. I, I don't even want to call myself a fake fan, but like fan by default. Fan by by default, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, ugh, I don't even watch their games all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not even like dressed in the stuff, and I'm definitely not gonna be dressed in those new uniforms. They're trash. The red ones. I can't stand the hundred. <laughs> it's like the hundredth anniversary ones. They're horrible. Those like, might be the worst. They're outfits. the ugliest. I don't. I don't know who did this, but I'm gonna look into this camera and let yes, them know it's do. absolutely horrible. Yeah. Like, why would they do that? Like those why might be worse that? than the Steelers and the Packers throwback. With the stripes? Were yeah, they like stripes? The bumblebees. Those might be worse than the bumblebees. It was just horror. I mean, I know they're trying to pay homage to the like the olden days or whatever when like the first season or whatever, but mm -hmm. it was they're horrible. Yeah. They're horrible jerseys. I can't stand them. I'm just like, mm-mm. Why would they do that? But I say that to say, and people are always like, how can you be a fan of all these teams? I cheered for the Dolphins. So literally, I'm, you were a cheerleader yeah, for the Miami. I was, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, was, Miami. I yeah. cheered, I cheered for the Dolphins 2004, 2005 season when Ricky Williams like played and then mm -hmm. disappeared and went to go smoke weed in Australia. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> so I'm a Dolphins fan as okay. well. 
And I'm so excited because my favorite giant is now a o dolphin, o Odell. OBJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Odell. Um, and I'm already like looking at the schedule like, so <laughs> what game can I go to? Um, Did you circle in on one? Uh, no, not yet. But I, I haven't been to the new Hard Rock. So okay. I want to like I've been to the new stadium because mm -hmm. we had a, um, a reunion and I got to go on the field and everything like mm -hmm. that. Um, but it happened to be the longest game in history because it kept raining. Mm. And so they kept having to cancel it. Yeah. So we never got to perform on the field. We got on the field and mm -hmm. right when they were like, we were going to perform, they're yeah. like, Hey, we can't let you guys on. It's yeah. a storm. And then they, we got off and then they were like, well, you can stay if you want. Mm -hmm. And we were like, we're going to go home. Yeah. We went back to the hotel and we looked and the game was still going on. Mm. And we were like, I'm so glad we left because yeah. we wouldn't have been able to perform anyway. But, right. and then I am a Panthers fan because I've been here for so long. Yeah, rightfully so. So really it's like, if the Giants, somebody will be like, oh, your Giants won. I'll be like, oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah. but like, I'm just going to always root for them. And anytime I see someone with Giants gear on, mm -hmm. I'm like, you are so loyal. You are a loyal person good person well giants have two super bowls those two yes. super bowls with eli were magical they, so at least y'all yes. have that yes some that teams very don't have true. nothing that is very true and i will say that all the time like hey we have rings multiple yeah but um yeah, yeah definitely so can hype got, that up at least you got that some people will never experience their team winning the super bowl that was me before we got ours right in 2017 so it, it happens um, when you were when you were a cheerleader for Miami Dolphins, what was that mm -hmm. like? Wow, that was crazy. Cause if you ever watch Making the Squad, the mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders take that and put it in Miami. Yeah. It was the exact like everything that they did. We had to go through like everything. What? So basically, the epitome of an NFL cheerleader mm -hmm. was my coach. She came from Dallas mm -hmm. and like, it, she was like the poster child of cheerleader. She came from Dallas and she was like, you've got to weigh this amount. Mm -hmm. You've got to look like this. Your hair has got to be like that. Um, so when I tried out, I was, 19 or 20 and I was weighing in at like I'm 5'3 so I'm I am shorter I was like 125 okay and by the time training camp was over I was 115 pounds mm -hmm. so I was so tiny so small and I made the squad and then they were like um okay you made the squad and you've gained your weight back you're mm -hmm. back to 125 we need you back to 1 115. 115 and I was like I can't like yeah. I, I literally was almost starving myself and so was that intentional when you went from 125 to 115 it wasn't it okay. was because I I didn't work out I mm -hmm. never like really worked out uh -huh. I and now I was three times a week, mm -hmm. three hour dancing, like straight through in the Miami heat, the Miami. you're just going to lose the weight. Yeah. And it was just so intense. And they'd say, oh, when you go home, eat an apple, don't eat dinner, eat an really? apple. When you go home, eat, eat some tuna. And so I was eating an apple because I'm like, okay, they said not to. And sometimes you were just so exhausted, yeah. you weren't even hungry. Uh -huh. um, but I don't consider myself like having an eating disorder or anything like that. It was just like, you were stressed, you were tired, you were just, let me go home and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, but I was so tiny and it was so heartbreaking because they weighed you in before the game. Mm -hmm. And the very first game, they said I had to sit out at like the, I think it was like the pregame performance or something like mm -hmm. that. And I had to sit out because they were like, oh, well, you gained weight, you're on probation. But after that, like they never really bothered me again about my weight because I'm yeah. like, look, you're going to kick me off the, the squad for 10 pounds because yeah. it's not coming back. Yeah. And they were like, your butt. And I'm like, I'm black. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I have a butt. Oh, they were saying there's too much yeah, ass? They, they, yeah, yes. Wow. And it's crazy because they will like look you up and down. Uh -huh. Then on top of that, my hair is naturally curly. Uh -huh. So I had it blown out and they were like, sorry, we already have a curly haired girl. You have to wear your hair blown out. And I'm like, I don't have a perm. 
if I dance, my hair is going to fluff up, curl up, yeah. edges, whatever. And we didn't have like flat irons that were like really good like they are now. Mm -hmm. um, and I refused to wear a wig. I refused to wear a perm. I mean, can you imagine dancing and your wig fall off in front of all mm, those people? So, true. yeah. No, it was just, it was a lot. But everything you see for the Dallas Cowboys show mm -hmm. is exactly what happens in real life. So like, uh, like the... The requirements, I should say, the physical mm -hmm. requirements mm -hmm. for the women that were cheerleading, like, was it worth it, I should ask? Because that sounds like very, like, you know, like... Was it worth it? That's a great question because I think the experience was amazing because mm -hmm. here it is, what, is it 20, 20 years later? I'm mm -hmm. 40 years old. Mm -hmm. 20 years later, I'm talking about You're something. 40. I'm 40. Look, I'm yeah. for 40. Thank wow. you. Yeah. yeah. Um, 20 years later, I'm mm -hmm. talking about it and it's like still relevant to this day. Yeah. The amount of money we were paid, and I, I, I can talk about that all day. I don't care. $25 a game. That no. is it. 25. Yeah. Because sometimes people are like, they didn't get paid much. Yeah, nothing. $25. And you can't say, oh, well, that was back in 2002, it like two it, or it four or five. 90s. It doesn't matter. Yeah. $25. And you know how long a football game is, right? Yeah. We would get there like two hours before the game. That, so that's like five hours. It was so so ridiculous. Five dollars an hour. Twenty five dollars. Wait, so not I don't even a, know. Not even an hour, like no, a no, game. No, twenty five dollars a game. Why? So cheerleaders aren't full time. So they wanted you to have an occupation or be in school. Like you had mm. to have an occupation. Okay. Um, it, like that was a requirement. Yeah. You couldn't just be. I just want to be a cheerleader. I'm a stay at home mom. It's like you had to have yeah. something else. Um, they wanted well-rounded women. They wanted, I mean, 400 girls tried out and only 40 made it. Damn. So, uh, yeah. It, it Shout was, out to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I had dance experience, but mm -hmm. I didn't have, like, the experience. Like, some of the girls, um, you know, that were, like, trained all the way through, mm -hmm. you know, high school and um, college. I kind of just was like, well, I danced in high school mm -hmm. and... You know, let's see what happens. Yeah. But um, a story that I do have on my Instagram that I feel like is really inspirational to anybody that's like trying to do something mm -hmm. and failed was when I went to University of Miami. I tried out for the Sensations. That's their dance team. Okay. It's similar to, to NFL cheerleading, their mm -hmm. dance style. And I didn't make it. And I think it was like maybe 10 girls or something. It was very small amount of girls. And I feel like I didn't make it because they met their quota of black girls already. And mm. one, a couple of the girls were like captains. So it's like, well, we don't really need any more black girls. Mm. You know, sorry to make it. Yeah. Um, and it could have been just that I wasn't good enough. I don't know. But in the breezeway, maybe like a week or two later, the Dolphins were there recruiting, saying like, we're looking for cheerleaders. Would you be interested? And I was like, well, I didn't make this squad. And, you know, I'm not going to make an NFL squad. It's yeah. not going to happen. And I said, well, let me try out and see. And then found out um, a girl that I was going to school with was trying out too. Mm. And so we tried out together. We both made it. But I, I always tell people, like, you know, you never know what they're looking for. You never know if you don't try. Mm -hmm. And I tried and I made it. And I would be in campus like, yeah, I'm an NFL cheerleader right, right. That's to the girls that, like, on didn't the other, pick me. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to go shoot this calendar uh -huh. this week, you know. Yeah. But back to pay, mm -hmm. they would pay us way more for, like, for events. So like if we had a signing at like a boat show, yeah. it'd be like $125 or okay. something like that. So they would pay for bigger events and they flew the entire squad to Hong Kong for like to cheer in the parade, the um, New Year's parade. The Chinese so New Year's The Chinese parade? New Year parade. Wow. Yeah, so that was huge. I yeah. mean, when you want to break down certain things, I'm mm -hmm. like, well, they did fly us to Hong Kong. Yeah. So there was some great things that came out of it. It was a growing experience, but would I do it again? Back then, I when I came here, mm -hmm. 
my dad was like, you've already been a Dolphin cheerleader. You don't need to be a Panther cheerleader because mm -hmm. I was considering it. Yeah. He was like, you've already been on one of the top squads. Yeah. You don't need to. Miami. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I say we were top three for sure. Top three. I don't maybe Raiderettes and then us. Well, Pats. Nope. Pats. In the, New England? New England. Really? Yeah, I'd say. And what them. we all call Miami what? Uh, just Miami Dolphin cheerleaders. Okay. Yeah, we didn't have like a cute little name little or anything. Mm -mm. All right, cool, cool. What year were you at Miami, the University of Miami? I was there right after the championship. Okay. So I was going to say, were you there when they were like, yes. really the U? Yes. Like Ed I was Reed there, like I So Ed Reed had graduated. Okay. But like, I used to like go to Ed Reed's house. Yeah. Like I know... So much like Sean Taylor was there. Sean, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Sean Taylor's my grade. Okay. And so I knew Sean Taylor and Damn. like that. Yes, yeah, like all good. that. Like and then um, Andre Johnson. He yeah. just he's a Hall of Famer now. Mm -hmm. He just got inducted, and so did Devin Hester. Mm -hmm. Devin Hester was a year after, after me. Yeah. yeah. So he's younger than me. Yeah. Um, but like Sonoris Moss. Yeah. Santana Moss. Santana. I know through Sonoris, but okay. I don't, like, we didn't go to school together. Yeah. Um, so many yeah, greats. Yeah, you were there legends. So many greats. Like, I know, that was it's crazy. It's just very, like, crazy. Like, when I talk about it, people are like, you know who? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I went to school with them. Yeah. They're great people, awesome yeah. people, yeah. So there's this one scene of, like, Andre, and then I forget who the other player is, but they were like, Almost got in a, they got in a fight. And oh, he like Cortland to, Finnegan. Yes, him. He whooped his ass, which is, is crazy because like Andre <laughs> seems very chill. Andre, when I say like I always post on his Instagram and I'll be like gentle giant, gentle giant, because that's he would just be so gentle, yeah. so nice, so sweet and quiet. Mm -hmm. But then you see. He had to bring, he had to bring yes, that Miami out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. He whooped his ass. Yeah. But Cortland was one of those dudes, like most DBs, that mm -hmm. try to get under people's skin. Right. So exactly. everyone knew like Cortland deserved right, it. Like, right. Right. And that's what he was known for getting his ass with by Andre Johnson. Like mm -hmm. no one was mad. Right. I don't even think the the team or the NFL was mad at Andre Johnson after right. that. Because like I mean, it's Andre Johnson. He be out the way, but he probably deserved exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Damn, you were there. So like, what was the party scene like? So I would like everybody thinks that the school mm -hmm. is the party. Mm -hmm. It's Miami is the party. Mm -hmm. So you're 18 years old. And like, I think for like my 20th birthday, I was with Lil Wayne and like all these different people, yeah. like on my birthday, I'm like sitting in the picture with like, yeah. what? It's, it's insane. Yeah. You know, it's insane at, to be that young. You're in the club. When I first moved down there, I met a promoter, mm -hmm. and that's really how I ended up at all the different clubs. Yeah. I was down there right when BMF was down there. So watching like the BMF stuff when they're like, oh, we're going to go to Miami. I'm mm -hmm. like, it's so crazy. Wow. When I was in Miami, I didn't even know they were from Detroit. Yeah. I thought they were from Atlanta. Atlanta. Wow. So, I mean, I've seen a little Meech, the, uh -huh. who plays uh, Big, Big Meech. Meech. I saw him in like the mall one mm -hmm. day with his mom. And I remember someone saying that's that's Big Meech's son. Mm -hmm. And he was a little boy. So mm -hmm. back, then. back then. So wow. me seeing him now yeah. is crazy. It's like that is so crazy that I saw you like as a little boy. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just so many things come back and you're looking like, wow, that is insane. Yeah. Just the whole Detroit to Atlanta to Miami. I'm mm -hmm. like, I always thought they were from Atlanta. So. Yeah, a lot of people did. A yeah. A lot of people did. Yeah, because they was heavy with like the Atlanta dudes, like Jeezy and mm -hmm. them. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then I thought they might have been from California because they have like a strong California connection with their music. Mm. So I, I didn't know where they were from. I just know that they had a lot of money and yeah. they were in the clubs and they were yeah. spending it. And they did music videos and I would do music videos and they would pay the girls. Mm -hmm. cash it, yeah. it, it was crazy it was really really crazy yeah. how much money they had damn mm -hmm. money to blow money to blow wow. yes that's wild. blowing money fast shout out to sure. miami shout out to miami well speaking of music uh earlier we was listening to sexy red yeah and she's like damn near like that as far as like yeah. woman artists like she's top like yes. as far as women hip-hop artists right. i should say 
Do you like her music or do you like so, what she represents, all of that? Uh, definitely not what she represents, but I am ratchet a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I will play her music. Mm -hmm. I have a video of me twerking <laughs> at the Nikki concert and I put mm -hmm. her song over it. Oh, so I definitely yeah. can't say that I'm like yeah. not a fan. Now, granted, what she's talking about, I'm not a huge yeah, fan of. Wild. Yeah, she is so she wild. Is wild. And a lot of people are like, oh, she's a plant. Basically, like they planted her in the industry to mm -hmm. like distract us. I mean, what's well, I wouldn't say she was. Well, what's your take? Do you think like these white music execs and A and R's purposely like are putting her on top yes. to like? Yes, Represent, what, like, Bobby Schmurter, remember? Uh -huh. did, did you see the video of him when he was auditioning? He was on the table. Shit, he, yeah. I, I like his energy. I uh -huh. think he's, whenever I see videos of him, I like, I enjoy uh -huh. him. I just feel like he looked like a clown. I feel like he was a dancing monkey and he was putting on a show mm -hmm. for everyone. And it's kind of sad, but at the same time, it's like, we like the ratchet music. Well, but can so. you? Well, could you? Yeah, we do. We, we do. do. But could you blame him? Like, yeah, or Sexy Red? They're both like kind of in the I'm same not, category. I'm not gonna ever blame them because get your money. Right. But get you're your saying money. like that vibe felt like okay. It just I know what you're saying yeah. because he, he was sitting on the table and they're just sitting there. They're it was just all sitting, white people yeah, around it, a it's table. It's like embarrassing yeah, almost. Yeah, and I, see, he I was, see exactly what you're and saying. And I don't know if he did it like because they were like Bobby, you gotta you gotta go hard, Bobby. Yeah. You, be, you and better. I think that's just his energy. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's very high energy, so right. he gave them that because he's that same way in like all of his music videos right. as exactly. well. Exactly. Exactly. So you know, he really wanted to put on, but um, yeah, uh, with sexy red. First off, I'm gonna say this. I think she's very pretty, naturally pretty. I think Sexy Nash Red is pretty. Okay, so she was on. It was like Shade Room or something like mm -hmm. that, and they were talking so bad about her body. And I, really? yeah, they were like, "Oh, she looks bad, body. She's this." And I made a comment about her body, saying it's beautiful, it's natural. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm big on natural. Like my dad and yeah, my too. mom have always been like, no shade to like people with BBLs or like, you know, enhancement mm -hmm. boobs, whatever. Um, but they've always like, just been like, you're beautiful the way you are. Like, you don't have to wear a lot of makeup. You don't have to wear a weave. You don't have to wear a wig. And like, I just, that was like instilled in me. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like that's instilled in a lot of people. It's not. So look what's in front yeah, of them 24-7. Exactly. 24-7 is like, you know, big butts. And, mm -hmm. you know, luckily I have like a cute little shape genetically. I don't really have to do too much. Yeah. I'm in the gym now, but that was just because I was eating way too much. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just... If it's instilled from the parents, the parents really have to do like our we have to instill in our kids like hey it's cool to be natural it's cool to you know love yourself it's cool to have you know a crooked nose it's cool to you know well, have what a if she says but mom the the pretty girls on tv and instagram they have bbls and they get all the attention I'd say, you know, mommy got attention yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just, I really feel like, thank God for my parents yeah. because, you know, I, and, and no shade to like wigs and weaves because for a while I was wearing wigs and weaves and mm -hmm. I'm like, I just, I just liked how it looked mm -hmm. or a lot of makeup, like I'm wearing makeup now. I went and got my makeup done because I was like, Hey, I'm, I, I want a finished look mm -hmm. um and there's nothing wrong with that but there's also like you guys come on like the fake boobs the fake hair the fake butt and it's like oh we don't do this for men we do it for ourselves i always call bluff on that i don't i, I had don't a think discussion so. with um, i don't i don't think so because i'm like okay you mean to tell me there's no men on planet earth all women you will still get a bbl right and she tried to tell me yeah i'm like i because the thing is, y'all get it because, you know, men like fat asses. Right. So, like, I, I, I'm i going to call bluff every time. And I'll debate any woman on here that wants to come on and say that they get BBLs not for men. And if if that's the case, then if you're saying you get it for yourself, 
what what is that still right. what is that really doing because right. whether you have an ass or you don't you're going to feel the same way because right. you look at if a woman says oh i got a small ass so that doesn't look good that's off of a preference that we put out on right. in the earth in the atmosphere i feel like with. the only thing i can argue is makeup i feel like women do makeup for themselves mm-hmm. because most guys don't like makeup most guys yeah. are like oh that's too much like they mm-hmm. have the thing birthday makeup like your on your birthday light, it's like but your you, neck just, is brown. you just go ham yeah, on your birthday and it's like yeah. did you really need all that sparkle yeah. and color so i really feel like makeup is for women like they mm-hmm. you do that for women mm-hmm. but i feel like everything else is like did you really need that double D? Like, was that Because we really... like curvaceous bodies. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that that does make sense. Um, and yeah. some people will say, well, it, I look, I feel like I look better in my clothes because of it. Understood. But, like, you didn't have to do that much to mm-hmm. look better in your clothes, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, like I said, I'm, I'm willing to debate any, you know, ladies that want to talk about it. Because I had a discussion with um, one girl that was on there before. But again, I'm a, I'm a always I'm a always called bluff. Um, <laughs> since we were speaking about sexy red, mm-hmm. I was hit with a good question by a friend earlier, and she asked uh, music like R and B because mm-hmm. she loves R and B, but mm-hmm. vast majority of it is '90s R and B, which I think is the goat right, era of R and B, right? So she was saying how like back then, like dudes was really singing about their love right. to women, right? And now that's out the window. Like you right. don't you don't see it at all. Like R and B now would be just talking about how how nasty they want to be when they fucking like right. Exactly. It's not really expressing the love. Right. Let me ask you because you've seen both sides. You've mm-hmm. seen both eras. Why do you what what happened? What why is social today's R and B missing? So you're saying social, social media, media it. like social media? As much as I love it, I hate it mm, because same. I mean it's just like. I don't know. It's just horrible. It is. Honestly, it's horrible. Um, but the music back then, like right now, and people mm. make fun of me. They're like, you don't have Apple Music. I'm like, no, I listen on my Pandora. I pick a station and mm. then like I just play it on there. Yeah. Or like I might have YouTube and they're like, you listen to music on YouTube? I'm like, yeah, I do. It's an app for that now, you know? There. Well, you can just just the music. I think it's called YouTube Music. I might need to do that because yeah, I that I'll like do that. Um, but I'll have my my station right now. Like before I came over here was Jodeci. That was See? my station. Yeah. So it's like playing um, Meeting in My Bedroom. Mm-hmm. And even though that's talking about that, it's more of like a pleasing than a than a like. A raunchy. It was more like know? making love right, as today right, is exactly. just fucking the shit out exactly. of Exactly. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So at like I said, Jodeci was this my my song choice. And whenever it gets to R. Kelly, I'm like, I wanna listen to you. So do, you, do, you listen. do you listen to Kells? I listen. I listen. I, I, listen, listen, to Kels too. I listen and I'm like uh, okay, R. Kelly is a lyrical genius. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Like, he just is. Just like Diddy. Like, his music kept playing. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, let me... It wasn't me skipping because of, of the stuff that just came out about mm-hmm. him. It was skipping because I was like, okay, let me just go to the next song. Mm-hmm. And literally, like, the three songs that I skipped were all him. It was, like, Total. It was... um Honey Remix. Mm-hmm. He was on all yeah. of those. Yeah. And you just think to yourself, you're like... He's on so much music, yeah. it's crazy. So do you se- like do you make that separation as far as artists that maybe had some type of dark past in their music or do you kind of like I have to because I mean there's like like Elvis. Was, I was ready to say a lot yeah, of a lot we were a lot of yeah. mu- a lot of great musicians had like a past, past like yeah. that Elvis, even James yeah, Brown. Exactly. Um what's his name? Uh uh, that left the Temptations, David Ruffin. Ruffin, yeah, like a lot yeah, of dudes. If you really sat there and said, "I'm not going to listen to them because of X, Y, and Z," I'd say 70, 80 percent of people. I'm oh, this person is an abuser. Well, knock eighty percent mm-hmm. of the people out. You know literally, what I mean? Literally. So I and know. Even, and even and even here's the thing, and I get I get a lot of backlash <laughs> for this when people say, you know, when I. If R. Kelly's playing, is like, nah, why you listen to that? Yeah. I say, do you have that same energy for Michael Jackson? Right. But wait, are we like sure that he did the things that he did? So or as, am I am I Delulu and no, I just love Michael? You're, you're not crazy for saying that. Because as of recently, 
because nothing was ever proven right, against Michael exactly. Jackson. Exactly. I'll admit that. Now it was now he did sleep in bed with other little boys. Right. But it was nothing proven that anything sexually happened. Right. Now and then you know a lot of he had a few speeches breaking down where like yo I didn't have a childhood right like I I I don't know what it's I have no clue what it was like to be a regular child right. so when he was an adult and on his free he tried to relive his childhood right I see that I get that right sleeping with little boys is still weird yeah but that's too much yeah but nothing was proven so right. I kind of, I'm not as harsh on him as I was before. Mm -hmm. Him and R. Kelly definitely ain't on the same level. Mm Because R. Kelly shit was proven. Right. Michael Jackson wasn't. Right. So I don't say it as in he did things as bad as R. Kelly. But if we're talking stipulations and Mm -hmm. stuff like that, then I would still say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think, I don't know. It's weird. Because you can, because wasn't, didn't his like his stuff just get bought by Sony? And like, didn't they try to buy his catalog before? And he like was going to war with Sony so you never know. I mean, yes, because um, I think Catherine, his mother, and his son were like fighting it, mm-hmm. and I think they said just let it go, mm-hmm. like let it go. Yeah, I remember reading or hearing something about yeah. that. So and, yeah, I mean, it, and they say that may have something to do with his death. Right, it could be. And then his father was a known molester. Like I think he molested. Um, Latoya, for really? sure. I think he molested Rebe, the eldest daughter. Damn. And when she le- basically, I think in her book or what she, or an interview she did, they said as soon as Rebe left, mm-hmm. the molestation started that night on Latoya. Really? Like, yeah. Wow, I went so from, if yeah, that's like the DeBarge family, right, right, yeah. right. So as soon as that happened. In there, I'm like, what was happening to Michael? Mm. And then was Joe so wanting them to be famous that he let anything happen, like from music executives, you Mm. know, like Holly weird, like who knows what happened to Michael? So a lot of times people say um, when they are, um, you know, sexually abused, I don't know if you have to like change that um, wording or whatever, but sexually abused, it trickles down to them. Like I'm almost positive yeah, something most, happened to R. Kelly. I'm almost positive. There's no reason that wasn't he like he was like molested by his older sister or some, some shit. something yeah. happened to him yeah. for him to do that. And a lot of people will argue that like no, he's he's just crazy. I really feel like a lot of times when people have been molested, mm-hmm. they continue that and Act they abuse out. and oh, they absolutely. you know they do that and it's so scary and it's so sad, but. Yeah. You know, yeah, I definitely feel that way about him. Yeah, it is fucked up. Um, real quick, we you kind of answered how social media is the reason why R and B ain't the same mm-hmm. today as it was before. Could you? I don't think you like really yeah. broke that down. So I I say that because like look at relationships. Yeah. Like social media ruins relationships because one it's easier to access people. Like Mm -hmm. I can go on the internet right now and find somebody in California and Mm -hmm. get flued out like Mm -hmm. tomorrow if I wanted to, like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then um, I've been in relationships where I've told the person, like I didn't feel comfortable with you liking pictures and they'll be like, well, why? It's just, it's just a picture. It's like, yeah, but it's like, the whole boobs are out or like Mm -hmm. it's a woman bent over. And now it's like your boyfriend and, thousand other people liked this picture mm-hmm. and it's like yeah so what I'm does not that okay mean to that. you when you like like what do you feel like when you see that a man your your boyfriend My like boyfriend. another woman's photo yeah, on his, it, it i brought it i brought it up to them i said it made me feel uncomfortable they were like i don't see what the big deal is mm-hmm. and i just knew from then i was like this isn't gonna work and mm-hmm. it didn't it didn't work because there was so many other things i'm like if you're liking it publicly what are you doing in the dms like are you reaching out to these people are you i don't you... think that correlates Alexis. really i don't think that because it's the same as say you're out in public and you see but a... the types of pictures like you have a girlfriend and you're okay with like liking a girl bent over thong mm-hmm. twerking all that stuff and you have a girlfriend and you know it's gonna i don't care if you Look at it. But knowing she, because that's when like I the names will pop up. I don't care if you look at it. Up. You can look at it all day. Hey, uh-huh. you can look at porn. You can look at all that. Okay. I do not care. But when you press that like. Giving the energy, saying that, hey. You are giving I, the okay. energy. I see what you're saying. You are saying, I like what this looks like. Mm-hmm. 
And just what if it's like a local girl? So you're cool with him thinking that oh. I like what this looks like, but you that's just don't okay. want him putting it out there in yes, the public. Like, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's like fair. I don't care because I don't I don't even care. Like if we go to the strip club or if mm. you go to the strip, I'm I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say, well, how can you be okay with that? And because I'm like, I used to work in a strip club. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a stripper. I was a, a bottle girl. And mm -hmm. I know like those girls are there to make money. 99% of the girls are there to make money. Mm -hmm. And you have like that 1% that's like, okay, I might do some other strange, you know, do 40, some strange. For, special. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do something strange for some change. Mm -hmm. But most of those girls are there. Mm -hmm. They're getting their education. They are trying to start a business. Mm -hmm. Most girls that danced back at Onyx years ago mm -hmm. they have a business or they have something going for themselves yeah. and i salute them because they were not in there doing the things that a lot of women think mm -hmm. so that's why i'm like totally okay with like do you want to go to strip club do you want to mm -hmm. hang out like let's go to strip club but yeah. when it's on instagram it's like it's completely different it's like i don't know let's i just let's put it out there yeah. Yeah. I can see that. No, no, that's a that's a that's a Is that take. changing your mind a little bit about that or no? About what? About liking pictures. Like it, I don't know so if you have I, a significant other or not, but if you do, one would they be okay with it and then two the type of pictures. Cuz it was the type of pictures this person was liking. Mm -hmm. I was just like you're bugging. Yeah, because it was like very Sexual, sexual, pictures. very sexual videos, pictures. Um, I see mm, that is tough. Okay, say so I have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Would I do that to her? Like, would I like photos and post up stuff that's like specifically showing that? Probably not. I'm I'm just more low key, and I don't even personally see? like <laughs> even now because it's such an abundance of it on Instagram, right? I'm not crazy about that. Right. Like, do you just keep stro scrolling? Yeah, yeah. Like that don't like get me excited when I, cause it's everywhere now. It's, it's nothing it's everywhere. It's, it's nothing, nothing new. Yeah. It's nothing new or special. So, so when you see a girl like in a thong, like bent over, like in a store twerking yeah. or some shit, I'm like, ha. Huh. It keeps right. like, I don't know. Like it's, it's crazy how social media has put so much of that on blast now to where the exclusiveness, like men, we prefer the exclusiveness right. now. It's it's reversed. Right. At first, when nothing was put out there, like we was geeked to see right. shit like that. Exactly. You know what I mean? But now, since there's so much out there, like we like the exclusive now. Right. So it's reversed. So me personally, I don't even, you know, get happy over seeing that type mm -hmm. of stuff on Instagram as it is. But let's reverse it. Let's say she, you know, let's see a, a guy shirtless, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, a male stripper or whatever, if she was like liking his stuff. I'd feel a little bit some type of way. Right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't like lash out, but I'd be like, "Why? What was the point of that? Yeah, Why like, do you, you want them? Like, what's... Yeah, ex do you want them? Yeah, exactly. Do you want them? Yeah, do you want them? I would ask. Like, exactly. Do you want them? Yeah. And that's and and when I asked, like, so what's up with this? Mm -hmm. No, this is how I posed the question. I was like, so you have a girlfriend, mm -hmm. and. You know, is that, do you think that that's, I always would say, do you think that if that's okay, do you mm -hmm. think that's okay if you're in a relationship and you're liking the pictures and stuff like mm -hmm. that? And he was like, yeah, I don't, I don't see a problem with it. Mm -hmm. I don't see nothing wrong. And then like, I showed him the picture and mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, not like not. I was like, oh yeah, this, this, mm -hmm. this is not going to work. This Did you ever work. ask him like, if he, if that's what he wanted? Well, I saw a lot of the people that he was liking and mm -hmm. they did not look like me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is that your type? And he was like, no, you're my type. And I was like, I don't see how because if I don't you, look anything like mm, them. You're actually like liking. And you're liking a it. lot of similar. A lot of similar. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I I'm not that skin color. I'm not that size. Yeah. So is that your fetish? Is yeah. that like, what is that? So mm -hmm. that's another thing. And then it built it makes you insecure it makes a secure person I insecure yeah, you yeah know? i can see that because so, yeah yeah i can see that for sure for sure yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense i ain't mad at it yeah i'm not mad at it but i mean yeah i think instagram and social media it can uh affect the relationship pretty but bad if then that's how it affects the music mm -hmm. because it's like all they want to see is you know, mm, booty want shaking, and they want to see yeah. all that. So, I mean, we did have two live crew, but that was rap. That wasn't, right. you know, R&B. Right. So they always say they stop, when they stop grabbing the air, mm -hmm. that's when the music changed. Okay, well, <laughs> I got to play, devil, play devil's advocate. So mm -hmm. I got to add a take to why R&B has changed. A lot of things, or 
a common answer, especially from men, is that like the men were begging, you know, for women to stay or really begging or showing their love for mm-hmm. women. And it's like today, well, are the women worth showing that love for? Right. Because in the nineties, you know, it wasn't all about getting tricked on. Right. And it was more it was a lot of natural women in the nineties. Right. So it's a complete opposite. Women aren't as natural today. Right. And now they don't want to hear nothing. They'll they'll start the conversation easily with their cash app. Right. So it's like men now is like Wait, okay, what? Yeah. What are they saying? Started with the Maybe cash I'm app. Too old because you know how what? many you know how many bios have the cash app in it. So when Instagram like well ca- when cash app first came out, mm-hmm. I was one of those people like if it was my birthday mm-hmm. or anything like that. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking oh. about even getting give it, even showing a little bit of interest of interest towards a man cash app. First, you know how many women say like they can't like you have to be able to prov- now get it provide. That's mm-hmm. a man's yes, job. Yes. But it's like now women won't even like they want their bills completely taken Pay, care yeah, of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we're talking about talking stage. Right. When I be talking about a husband. Right. You know what I mean? So and then just in general with social media showing just women want that instant gratification. They right. want bags. They want trips like right. they want money off bucks right so it's like dudes are like well if y'all just want to get tricked on all day we'll give y'all that in right. the music we're not gonna beg like it's right. not it's and i'm talking from a man's perspective as far as the dating pull out here and then you can speak on mm-hmm. uh, a men's if you like it is trash right it definitely is trash like i talk to somebody now because like it's like i'm like damn like this is a good woman right which it, it, i'm not used to right and i'm not even used to relationships but it's so rare to find that now and it would keep her it wouldn't make yeah. sense if i let her walk exactly you know what i mean exactly. so but that, again that was a rarity Right. It's not like that nowadays. So dudes are like, well, the R and B back then, it was women worth it. Right. It's not really worth it now. Right. It's not a lot of women, I should say, that's worth it now. You know what I'm saying? Expressing that uh that love that they did in the nineties. I think speaking on men and I don't really like for women to speak on men Mm because I feel like they're like, Well, you're not a man. Mm -hmm. Just like if a man speaks on a woman, Mm -hmm. but I just feel like there's so much out here. And like, once again, going back to social media, it's just so easy. It's so easy to just be like- To get that lust. To get the lust. Yeah. yeah. And the whole thing is like, yes, there's the the tricking and everything else, but then there's the girls that are just easy and like lonely or have the daddy issues or whatever mm. and are insecure. And mm. just a little bit of attention is like all they need to- mm. Start hanging out, start coming over, start, you know, doing whatever. And I just think it's so easy for guys. And then you've got the grass is always greener syndrome. Like they will hop ship and, you know, it's just, it's crazy. Social media is like, like I said, I love it, Mm -hmm. but it is just. It's probably the reason why I'm I'm going to be single forever cuz I'm just like social I media? Can't. Yes, it's so just So you couldn't date a guy that has social media? No, I'm fine with that, but it's just like if someone brings to your attention that they don't feel comfortable with that mm-hmm. and you like the person enough, mm-hmm. maybe they didn't like me enough. Yeah. But like respect that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I'd say that he respected it for a while and then kind of like reverted and mm-hmm. it just wasn't Natural but that's for one him. instance, Alexis. You shouldn't say no, you're going to be multiple, single forever it was because mul- of that. It was multiple times. Yeah. It was bad. It was multiple times. And then it was just like... Well, there's some guys out here that really don't take social media serious. So. They, and, and they'll say that too. But I feel like if the person you're... De- well, actually, he deactivated his account mm. because of it. He was like, it's causing too much problems. But he, then he had a snap. Mm. And, and I, like, I feel like is, Snap is snap worse. Snap is extra sneaky. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Snap is worse. Snap is way so worse. It, like, yeah, you deactivated your Instagram, but you had you a, snap. a Snap. Yeah. Yes. So I'm snap like, it's just giving, it's giving sneaky vibes. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just, I just feel like social media is, it, it can bring down a relationship for sure. Are you, are you like dating? Are you looking? I am completely single. Like, I'm not even dating. And it's because I was in a relationship. And I'm just like, you know, I need to take a step back. Because Mm -hmm. before him, I was with my daughter's father. Mm -hmm. And I basically, from 2017 to 2023, was Mm -hmm. not with anybody. Mm -hmm. I might have went on a date here and there, but, Mm -hmm. like, never dated anybody seriously. And when I finally took that plunge... Mm -hmm. And it was horrible. It was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to chill again for a while and just 
reevaluate what I want, my boundaries and like my attachment styles, because I learned a lot about attachment styles dealing with him. I was like, I just need to like learn more about myself and what I want. And being 40, it's like, I don't really have time to waste on anybody. Mm -hmm. And I cut people off so fast. I'm like, okay, I don't like this cut off. I don't like this cut off. And my mom says bad? it's bad, mm -hmm. especially at my age. Mm -hmm. Um, like what is his name? Kevin Samuels. Mm -hmm. He'd probably be like, you're 40 years old. You got a kid. You're this, you're that. Your dating pool is small. He would tell you to stop wasting time. Time. Yeah, he'd be like, you ain't. He's like, you you ain't got time to waste. Yeah, so you ain't exactly. got time to waste with evaluating exactly. yourself. So, um, I you know, I'll I'll go out on a date or something, and then I'll just, you know, it might fall apart. I recently went on a date, and it was just like, you're talking about. Ugh. I don't even want it. They'll probably watch this, but whatever. So they ba we went on a date. Guy's a nice guy, but then he was saying, I really like you. I, but I have a date on Monday. I have a date on Wednesday and then one on Thursday. He told you this? He told me this and then showed me the people that he had the dates no. with. Yes, he did. And this was the first date. No. And then said, but I'll cancel them all for you. So he was trying to play a card like I got motion. <laughs> yes. And yes. he wanted you to yeah. see that, and I and, I, and wanted I, you to get excited off of that, and, and be did. like, oh, if the if he has all these women that are you know, line up to see him, then he must be worth something. That's no, what he wanted you to think. I, yeah, and it it did not work. That was a terrible card. It was card. horrible. How old was he? He's older. He was like 46. That was a terrible yeah. card to play. Yeah, and oh, he's going to watch this, and you know what? I'm sorry. Like, I mean, well, listen. Yeah, I, he's going to watch it. He's going to see it. And Constructive I know, criticism. That was a terrible yeah, play. Like, terrible I would play. never say, oh, yeah, I have a date plan. And I didn't. I didn't have any other dates. Mm -hmm. But that was a turnoff. Completely. Well, yeah, damn, that was a crazy card yeah. to play. Like you, of course, you want like, you know, you not really, you don't put it out there, but right. like a woman can tell right. like when other women right. are naturally attracted mm -hmm. to a guy. So you don't have nobody to put that wants out there. someone who's not wanted. Yeah, facts. facts you know, facts. nobody. So, but you don't have to force. Right, you don't have to that tell wanted. me that. Yeah. You don't have to tell me. That. Oh, that so was that was a major turn. I mean, it was multiple turnoffs with that date, mm -hmm. but then I think he felt my vibe because he hasn't like reached back out. He mm -hmm. felt like I, he, he even said like, I apologize for that, mm -hmm. but it was kind of too late. It yeah. was just like, it yeah, I'm, I'm good. So, um, so you said, all right, so I'm, I'm getting that you're the type if it, whether dating or relationship, it mm -hmm. doesn't really go as good. You're like, this is this. So let me just take a step back and yes. see what's going on. Yeah. I was like that. I'm not going to lie. But as of recently, I'm like, well, first off, I don't really look. Stuff, right. I think it's better when it finds you just right. naturally, but still dating stuff. And I've, you know, had like talking stages, a lot that went, very few that went good, but a lot that went bad. Right. And at first I'd be the type of like, all right, fuck it. I'm just, but I think just still trying. What's they say? When you fall, right. get out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Still, yeah, still trying. Because I mean- if you don't keep trying, because like I know it's a lot of good women out here, but like for your instance, they had a dude that fucked them over. They're a good woman. They're like, okay, I'm done. Right. It's a lot of good women out here that are ducked off that aren't stepping out. Right. And it's like, yo, a good dude will find you. Right. Just how like the it's a rarity a good woman. It's a rarity a good man. But right. it will be found. But y'all gotta get out the goddamn house. Y'all yeah. gotta get out the house. And I'm trying, but I'm like, where do forty year olds go? Like we. Don't go to the club. People say a lounge, but I don't smoke hookah. I don't mm -hmm. drink. So it's kind of hard for me to like do things. So like I'll watch TikTok and there's mm -hmm. a guy on there. I think his name's Anwar. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, you need to go to these type events. You need to go to like the golf course. You need to. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't like golf. Like I'll go. I'll well, watch. I saw you were recently at. I went. I don't like golf. Well, I just were went. You that, were you that fishing? I went. <sighs> <laughs> I, went, hey. I, I received a free ticket. Okay. I love free food. So okay. I went um, uh -huh. and nobody approached me. The only person that even like spoke to me had a wedding ring on. So I was mm. like, and it wasn't like they were approaching me to like try to talk to me, mm -hmm. but like nobody approached me. And I'm like, do I have resting bitch face? Like, did I, am I unapproachable? Well, do you kind of do anything to like let someone know you want to be approached? And I feel like... I don't, and I don't a, know if like thing. I don't know if I'm like supposed to. I, I guess I'm just. 
It's awkward as, when no, it no, comes no, to that. I don't know. As the eyes. Yeah. Y'all can really, and you notice, y'all can really listen with the eyes so yeah. easily. Like, yeah. if it's a guy like you want to, just the eyes. Yeah. You ain't got to do nothing more than that. Or if y'all don't make contact, if you're not making contact with them, that simple bump into them, drop something, whatever. You know oh what I mean? my gosh, do the bend and snap, like, yeah, like legally it's, blonde. Yeah, like, it's, it's so many, like, little cues if he's not looking, but the eyes. Yeah. The eyes. Oh my goodness, the eyes. I've been reeled in so many times. I'm a sucker. <laughs> I've been real so many times off of them eyes, man. It's, it's, yeah. But I think you should, you know, let it be known that you want to be approached. Yeah. Because the guys like nowadays, like it's not Johnny Bravo days anymore where yeah. a woman like that hasn't even seen us, we're just going to completely walk up to and, right. you know, shoot our shots. Some guys do. Right. And I'm not saying I never do sometimes, but most times I don't. Because even right. now, like it's, it, it, it gets kind of sketchy out here like right. with approaching women because you might be... You know, the me too. Yeah, you get mace. yeah. Me too. You might be on someone's <laughs> Facebook page, right? Exactly. Like, you never know. So it it definitely, I think, is more helpful when you ladies, uh, yeah, make it you. seem like yeah, you're interested. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll a, have to work on that. A nice restaurant, a bar at a nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. Kevin Samuels used to always recommend uh, like a Roof Chris bar right, or something right. like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I guess I'll just be sitting at the bar drinking Shirley Temples. <laughs> Because that's what I do. Or they say Ritz Carlton lobby. Yeah. 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 Have you ever been to um the rooftop at the I think it's uh what's that spot called? What's the spot right next to um Is it Novelty or Aura or something like that? It's right one next to Romare Park. The hotel. Oh, I know which one you're Grand talking Bohemian. about. Um, I've been there before, but like just to eat lunch or like well, it can you start know, there. that's yeah. a really nice spot. Yeah. Like I'm, I mean, I'm I'm 29, but like I've always had an older spirit because mm -hmm. I've done mm -hmm. shit. I've been off the porch since I was 14 years old. Right. So like I did everything, so I calmed down early. But I went to Grand Bohemian rooftop a couple months ago on a date, and I was like, damn, this shit is dope. Nice. Like yeah. I can see that as a spot where you right. go like and just chill and like right. you know a guy yeah. approach you. I can see definitely. That. Yeah. But I have to get out more. Yeah, I used to. Get out. I don't know if you know, but I used to host parties here. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah, I used to host. Like, I, I'll name some people that mm -hmm. are promoters, like Sport Sporty mm -hmm. Um, the whole what is it? Presidential movement. Um, Robbie McNair. She. That's the event that I just came from. Mm -hmm. Um, with the Babe Cave. Mm -hmm. And um, you never met like. Uh, anyone at these events? Well, this is this is years ago when I used okay. to host. Gotcha. I mean, I don't know if you remember Ra you remember Raymond Felton who pay played for the Bobcats. I don't know if you've Point been guard? here. Uh, yeah, he yeah. played with the Knicks before. I think so. Did Ray yeah, play with the yeah. Knicks. Yeah. So just remember back then mm -hmm. when he played for us, mm -hmm. that was like the first party that I hosted was at Club Nine Three Five. So Adolf Shriver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that wasn't his. He just was hosting was it. Okay. And I feel like, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say I was like the first person ever to host a party, but mm -hmm. like nobody was really like hosting parties like that. Yeah. And I said, I want to have a birthday party. They put me on the flyer. They mm -hmm. put Raymond on the flyer. And mm -hmm. ever since then it was like, okay, we'll bring you back. Mm -hmm. We'll have you host. And yeah. then it just got to the point where for like 10 years I hosted parties and it was so much fun. I made good money doing it mm -hmm. and I met so many people. But yeah. then after I had my daughter in 27 or 2016, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm a mom now. I yeah. can't. And people will still to this day be like, hey, do you want to host a party? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm sorry if I'm going to be on a flyer for anything. It'll be like for a social media event. It's mm -hmm. not going to be for like hosting party. a party. Yeah. But I mean, I have so many people that are like, just just come out of retirement. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm 40. Yeah. What do I, what do I look like mm -hmm. being on a flyer unless it's like a forty and over party? Yeah, well, it's it's a mental thing, you know. The whole age thing is a mental. Like I said, you damn sure don't look forty. I thought you like a couple years older than me. <laughs> Thank at best. you. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna find some spots for you to you know. What I mean? know. I need to. Or yeah. if anybody knows some spots, mm -hmm. definitely right, cool. let me know. If y'all know some know. spots in Charlotte, that'll you know be a good vibe uh, for Alexis. Then um, you know. Shoot me or a DM. Her IG is going to be <laughs> on the uh, on the description, whether you're watching it or listening or whatnot. Alexis loves me. That's pretty much my ham handle for everything. Everything. Alexis yeah. loves me. And my, my cousin DeMarco actually gave me that name years ago, even before Instagram. It, I had like a website and he was like, because 
Alexis loves me. And yeah. I'm like, okay. And I, yeah. it's, it's been my handle for everything. TikTok, you know, I messed up on Snap when I first signed up and, mm. and couldn't get it. I put like the Alexis loves me and then my YouTube, which I don't really use, but mm. that one's the Alexis loves me. But yeah, that's how I got that name. Yeah, it's, it mm. goes good. It goes Thank good. You. That's a good one. That's Thank a good you. One. Well, listen, Alexis loves me. <laughs> um, I appreciate you for pulling up. I had honestly, I think I had like a, I had like four things that we didn't even get to because this was just a very natural conversation, yeah. which I absolutely love. Good, good, yeah, good. Like I love natural combos on here. I don't, I don't like ones where I'm like, okay, it's like I'm forcing it. Right. It's a long pause. Right. Like you have a great conversation, great Thank stories you. too. So we're gonna have to run this back one day. Yes, definitely. Yeah, seriously, I would enjoy that. I would love that. Yeah, and then we're gonna get caught up on. When you do come back, we're going to get caught up on your new dude and where y'all met. The love life, and then, yeah, yes, and then, and then yes. how you got him and that whole ordeal. I might, they need to put me on The Bachelorette or something, probably. Yeah. Well, the show, this, what was it? Didn't they do a show out here? What show Love is doing? Blind. Love is Blind. Child, with that clay. Oh, my goodness. I didn't watch goodness. it, but it's so good. You I have watched to watch one it. episode, and I'm like, they just, you have she, to watch he just it. proposed to her. They never seen each other. Could you do that? Yeah. No, oh, I, I, I couldn't do it because, and I don't shame Clay for wanting to be with somebody for their looks mm -hmm. because I'm the type of person, like if I'm not attracted to you, if I don't have butterflies for you, mm -hmm. then it's just not gonna work. And people yeah. say, well, it can grow, it mm -hmm. can grow. And I'm like, I just, I feel like if I'm not attracted to you, it's, it's just not gonna work. But yeah. I definitely re recommend it's Love is Blind on Netflix. All right, I'm gonna check it out. Gotta watch it. Cool, Gotta we'll watch do, it. we'll do. Well, listen. Thank you for pulling up again. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in, whether you're watching and listening. Um, I just ask that you go ahead and like, subscribe, and share this out. Help the algorithm. You know what I mean? The whole ordeal. And also, fill out the questionnaire at the bottom in the link description. It takes two to three minutes. You'll be anonymous. But I just want some feedback on how I can improve this show for y'all. All right? This goes for y'all. So thank you all for tuning in again. And Bye. shout out to thank Alexis. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. We out. Peace.